It's been over a month since Huawei sent over their MateBook 13, and it's no secret that I'm a Mac user, so I've been using the MacBook Air since launch. So what I wanna do is I wanna share with you my experience on what it's like using the MateBook 13 and how it compares to the MacBook Air. And what I wanna do is help you make a buying decision if you're looking for one of these to pick up. And I think that if you're not totally tied into the Apple ecosystem, that this could be the laptop to make you try something new this year. So I'm gonna get some coffee, let's talk. The transition from the MacBook Air to the Huawei MateBook 13 for a month really wasn't that tough because they both have the same form factor. They're both built really well with all metal. They both have the same port selection. They have a headphone jack, two USB Type-C ports. Actually, the Huawei has one on each side, which makes things really practical for me. But the one thing that I noticed is that you can only charge from the left side, which I always try to go and plug into the right side. Hopefully they can fix that through a software update or something. But the big difference for me is Thunderbolt 3 available on the MacBook Air. And even though I'm not a huge Thunderbolt 3 connected person, I don't really use eGPUs that much, but the Huawei, you don't have that choice. But the good thing about this is that there's a dedicated GPU in this thing, so you can do professional work without Thunderbolt 3. So that's really nice for the MateBook. So two big notable things for me when switching over to the MateBook 13 was Number one, the display. They both have 13 inch displays, but I noticed that you can really see the difference in the screen to body ratio on the MateBook 13. It just looks so much cleaner. And I also enjoyed the touch screen, especially for Windows. I don't use it a ton, but I like getting to the settings this way. And sometimes when you hit buy button or if you're just scrolling through a website, it's really nice. And it's got that three by two aspect ratio, which makes things a little bit easier. You can see a little bit more of the web page, So I enjoyed that as well. The MacBook also has a good display, but that huge bezel on the top, I notice it every time I go back to it now. So the MateBook definitely spoiled me in that department. Second big thing is the keyboard because there's gonna be a lot of debate over this, but the third gen butterfly keyboard still is not the greatest on the MacBook Air. It doesn't really have a lot of travel to it. Now you do get used to the keyboard and if you like it, then you know, kudos to you. I mean, it's not like I can't type on it, but it's not as comfortable as the MateBook 13. So when I first got on the MateBook 13, there was a lot of travel, it's really comfortable to type on. So for me, scripting and researching is a lot more comfortable on this. So that was one of the things that I really appreciated. And when it comes to the trackpad, I really like how Apple's trackpads are so big, but that transition wasn't that bad either on this because the MateBook 13 has a really rectangular and wide trackpad. It might not be as big as the MacBook, but it was a pretty easy transition as well. It uses precision drivers, so that's my driver of choice. So at least you get a lot of customization there and the responsiveness is good as well. Both of these have fingerprint scanners. Touch ID works really well, but every time that you open up the MacBook, you have to put in your password, which is fine. But here on the MateBook 13, I can just hit the power button one time and it reads my fingerprint at the same time. So I can just take a sip of coffee and it's just gonna log me in and I'm ready to work. So that doesn't look like it's a big deal, but when you do this over and over and over again, you really get to appreciate how fast and convenient that is. This is random, but this is a cat cafe. What do cats do at a cat cafe? When it comes to raw power, this is where I feel like the Huawei pulls away a little bit because of the fact that this can go up to an i7 quad core, the newer version actually, and it's a U-series processor where the MacBook Air has a Y-series processor and it's only dual core. Now they both have eight gigabytes of RAM and when it comes to performance, I'm not really a huge fan of synthetic benchmarks, but when you look at the two side by side, you can really see how much more potential there is in power with the MateBook 13. So if you're looking for power, then you're probably gonna end up picking this one. Now, when it comes to value, the base level MacBook Air comes with 128 gigabytes of storage for the SSD, that's pretty small, where this version here, $100 more, will get you a 512 gigabyte SSD. So to me, that's a pretty big deal, unless you're living in the cloud, which I can understand that you don't care about that, but when it comes to getting more for the value, for what you're paying for, that's where I feel like the Huawei really starts pulling away. 
So it's not all bad for the MacBook Air though, because even though it does have weaker internals and the Y series processor is really not that great, especially because it's dual core, but that's the one thing that Apple has going for them is the software optimization that they have. Because believe it or not, I can edit 4K video on the MacBook Air with really no big problems because Final Cut is so well optimized for this kind of hardware that it actually works. Now it's not the speediest operation, but you can edit 4K video on this. But with the Huawei, you can definitely get that done. So even if you're using Premiere, you can probably edit 4K on here without a lot of complications. So if you're doing a lot of effects and you're putting a lot of layers, then you're probably gonna wanna go to 1080p. But when it comes to Photoshop, Lightroom, that stuff's gonna run great on the Huawei. And that's the one thing that the Huawei also has is that internal built-in GPU. Internal built-in GPU, we all do. Dedicated GPU, it's got that in here so you can game. And that's the one thing that the Mac can't do because we all know that gaming on Mac is not a good experience. But that's the one thing I really liked about the flexibility of the Huawei because I don't wanna give you the wrong impression. This is not a gaming laptop, but with that MX150, the 25 watt version, you can play some cool games on here. So no matter where you are at the airport or wherever, so if you travel a lot, you can bust out a quick game on here. Overwatch, you're gonna be able to play on low and you're still gonna be able to get in those games whenever you want to. You can play Tomb Raider, you could probably play Apex. I mean, you could probably do a lot of that stuff on this, but you're not gonna get the greatest experience. Your frame rates aren't gonna be crazy, but to be able to play games on this really small form factor that's in your backpack, that's pretty nice. So that's a pretty big win for the Huawei as well. After using these two for an extended period of time, I feel like it doesn't matter which one you actually pick up because they're both really good, especially in their own right. Like they're different and I think they're trying to accomplish two different things. I feel like the MacBook Air is trying to be more of a supplemental computer to maybe a more powerful iMac where the Huawei is trying to be a standalone laptop. There's more power, there's more performance, and you get that in pretty much the same price that you would get for the MacBook Air. So $1,200 for the entry level MacBook and you're getting $1,300 here for the spec'd out MateBook 13, and this gives you more storage, dedicated GPU, and a much more powerful processor. So if you just take ecosystem aside, because trust me, the Apple ecosystem is very powerful because I'm tied into it. So if you're not tied into it, then this looks like a much better value, and it is because you're just getting so much more for the money and even when you compare it to other Windows laptops for this form factor and what you're getting, it's very, very competitive, if not one of the best deals on the PC market right now. So if you're not tied into the Apple ecosystem, which is priceless, I get it, you can't put a price on ecosystem, then I would take a look at the MateBook 13 because this could be the PC that kind of changes your mind. So I would give this a try because I think that this is one of the best packages that are out there right now in PC. So thanks for watching this. Let me know which one that you prefer. Like I said, I think they're both great. Let me know which laptops that you want me to take a look at next and do comparisons like this with, and subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next one.